Distributed applications consist of multiple services which talk to each other over the network. But how do these services find each other, either when you're running locally or in the cloud? In either situation, the services need to talk to a different endpoint, a different process on a different port. I'm Ruben, engineer at Microsoft, and today we're going to talk about how Aspire's service discovery helps applications to find each other. Now, service discovery is the function of converting a user-friendly name, a name that you've come up with for a service, into one or more network addresses, ways that your service can actually contact each other. So let's have a look at this code. Now, what I've got here is an Aspire starter template app. And right away, we're looking at the app host project. That's the orchestration project from David Fowler's talk. And you can see I've got three resources here. I have a Redis cache. I have an API service, which is backed by this API service project. And then I have this web front end here, backed by the web project. Now, the web front end needs to be able to talk to that API service. So what we've done here is we've said on line 10, the API service, sorry, the web front end has a reference to the API service. So we said with reference API service. That tells Aspire that when these projects are running, the web front end needs to be configured with service discovery so that it knows how to contact the API service. Let's look at how you set up service discovery in your application and then how you use it. So in the web project, if we have a look at program.cs, you'll see a few things. The first is I want you to see add service defaults. Now that's the common pattern in Aspire where we add the cross-cutting concerns to your application and configure things. So if we go to the definition of add service defaults, you'll see in the service defaults pro uh, project under extensions.cs, we have the add service defaults method. We're configuring open telemetry and adding health checks. But the important thing for today is we're calling services.add service discovery. This adds the service discovery services to the application so that we can use them later. And then immediately on the next line, we're configuring the HTTP client factory with defaults so that it will configure both standard resilience, which is retries and back off, but then service discovery. So we're saying that we want the default HTTP clients to use service discovery when we make calls. So that's how we set up service discovery from our application. How do we use it? Back in the web front ends uh, program.cs, we can see on line 14, we're adding an HTTP client. And so we're adding this typed weather API client that we're going to use to fetch the weather from our, from our API service. And then line 15 is the most important one here. On line 15, we're configuring the web client so that its base address points to that friendly name, API service, that same name that we saw in the app host project. So if you go back to the app host project on line five, we gave our project, our API service, the name API service, all lowercase with no spaces. And those two names line up. So you use this friendly name to call your service. And there it is. Now let's have a look at how this works once it's deployed. So here I've got the Aspire dashboard that you'll see as soon as you launch the application. You can see our three resources here, the cache, the API service, and the web front end. And if I navigate to the endpoint for the web front end, you can see our starter application. And here's the weather from the API service. So how did it actually find the address that it needed so that it could contact that? If we go back to the dashboard, we can look at the details for our web front end. And what this shows us is all sorts of details about it, including environment variables that we've set. And way at the bottom, you can see this standard format that we use here. Services, API service, HTTP zero corresponds to this address. So you can see the name of the service and then the name of an endpoint, and then the endpoints that correspond to that. So that shows us how Aspire flows configuration from the application, uh, from one application into the other. So that gives you a quick overview of how service discovery in Aspire works. The thing that I like most about this is that you don't need to change any code between your development environment and production. Aspire handles all of this for you, thanks to service discovery.